Welcome to the celebration of the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time at All Saints Parish. Today is the last Sunday in Ordinary Time. We continue to hear in the readings about the importance of being prepared and to be ready for the second coming of Christ. Next Sunday is the Feast of Christ the King, and then we begin the season of Advent. As you watch today's recorded Mass, we encourage you to participate as fully as you are able, to kneel if possible, stand where appropriate, and certainly to fully acclaim the responses. We also encourage you to light a candle in the space where you're watching this recorded Mass to remind us that we are all called to be the light of Christ to everyone we meet. Thank you for joining us. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my soul. This cornerstone, this solid ground, burned through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when strife. Hello and welcome to our visual mass, virtual mass here at All Saints Parish. Uh, if you haven't heard this before, just let me remind you that the obligation to attend mass has been dropped, suspended, whatever we call that, until further notice because the virus is getting worse than ever. So please be very careful. If you um, want to come to mass, we do have one at 4 o'clock at St. Joseph Church on Saturday and one at 10.30 on Sunday at St. Anthony Church. And we ask that you be spaced out and, and wear a, a mask and be very careful. And if you'd like to fulfill your obligation, not an obligation, but you do your Sabbath on, during the week, we have mass at St. Anthony Church at, on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9 o'clock. So you're welcome to come and you have a little bit more space there to be spread out and, and be more careful. So please continue to pray for all those who are infected with the virus and those who have died, their families, and for all who are suffering and for all our parents that we will stay safe and free from the virus and see one another again someday, hopefully soon. Thank you. I would like to thank Tina Schutte, who is in charge of all our music today, and ask that you sing along. Andy Gunter is our reader for the day, and uh, Emil Altmaier is our deacon, and he's accompanied by his wife, Agnes. Mike Wathen is our cameraman, and Peggy Epley and um, Amy Eager will put it all together so that you can view it. So thank you all for your service to us. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God 
and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, the Lord reminds us today in the scriptures that he has given us all talents, strengths, possibilities, and asks us to use them to spread his love. Let's take a moment to reflect on how well we've been doing. Lord Jesus, you show us a way to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, you reveal the kingdom and parables. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you call us to serve you with joy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Grant us, O Lord our God, the constant joy of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve faithfully the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bible handy, I would ask that you take it out and open it up to the book of Proverbs. We're looking at chapter 31, beginning with verse 10. And I think this hops around through various verses in this chapter, so you may have a little difficulty finding where we are at any given time, but um, you can just read through the whole thing. Anyhow, it's the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 10, and it's called The Ode to a Capable Wife. And Proverbs, in this last chapter, speaks of a, a wife who is industrious, very capable, is um, resourceful. She is industrious. She, she take, takes care of the poor, and uh, she's very wise. A reading from the book of Proverbs. A capable wife, who can find her? She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. 
She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hands to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share in the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the city gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to to God. Blessed are those who love you, happy those who follow you, blessed are those who seek you, O God. Blessed are those who love you, happy those who follow you, blessed are those who seek you, O God. Happy are those who fear the Lord and walk in God's pathway. You will find what you long for, the riches of our God. Blessed are those who love you, happy those who follow you. Blessed are those who seek you, O God. Your spouse shall be like a fruitful vine in the midst of your home. Your children flourish like olive plants, rejoicing at your table. Blessed are those who love you, happy those who follow you. Blessed are those who seek you, O God. May the blessings of God be yours all the days of your life. May the peace and the love of God be always in your heart. Blessed are those who love you, happy those who follow you. Blessed are those who seek you, O God. The next reading is taken from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, beginning with verse 1. The first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 1. And Paul tells the people of Thessalonica and tells you and I that they need to be ready for the coming of the Lord by remaining faithful to him and then they will greet him with great joy when he returns. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them. As labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, 
but let us keep awake and be sober. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The next reading is taken from the Gospel according to Matthew. We're looking at chapter 25, beginning with verse 14. Matthew 25, 14. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. <laughs> Jesus spoke this parable to his disciples. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two and to another one, to each according to his, his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one who with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. And see how I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. 
But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I do, did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. I must confess that there are two radically different ways of looking at this particular gospel. One fits the culture and times of Jesus and what fits our own culture. So with that said, let's just look at what fits us, if you don't mind, rather than be confusing about the whole thing. It speaks of a master who went on a journey and left entrusted his possessions to his slaves. Now that's pretty risky, trusting stuff to your slaves. But it's like God sees us as his slaves and entrusts us with stuff. Now the talents were a unit of money in Jesus' time. And it's hard to reckon, but educated guesswork tells some people that one talent was worth over two million dollars. And so you can do the math and figure out what each received. They received a lot. But in our understanding of talents, they are the gifts that God has given us, the strengths. And he's given us all strengths. Some people like to believe that they have none or very few, but we all have them. And Some years ago, I took the Strengths Finder put out by the Gallup Poll people, and they were able to identify my five main strengths out of some 32 strengths that are scattered among all of us. And let me just share some of mine. You might recognize some of yours. I looked for the whole list, but I couldn't find that. But anyhow... One of my main strengths is that I'm a futurist. I like to know what's coming in the future. I like to look over the next horizon and see what's beyond there. And so another talent is that I'm a learner. I try to to read a lot and to listen to stuff on the news and whatever to find out where this world is going and what's over the next hill. And then I'm a strategist. I try to prepare to deal with what's coming. And... I'm focused, which means I keep the course. I'm pretty persistent sometimes. And I'm self-assured, which I tell people means I act like I know what I'm doing. Really, it means that I'm able to risk at times in order to achieve the goal. And usually these risks pay off. Now, those are my strengths. They're not better than anybody else's strengths, but those are mine. Of all the other strengths, the 32 or so, I have some, but they're weaker, and I have some, I have none at all. I just don't have them, because you have them. And when the whole community of all saints comes together, we have all the gifts among us. So we are the Christ. So we can do most anything. As long as we work together, respect one another, listen to one another, and move ahead. 
That's why we're doing a planning process right now. But there are many other strengths, and I hope that someday we can get together again and present the Strengths Finder instrument so that you can discover what your gifts are. Now, I was surprised. When I saw that I was futuristic, I said, oh, huh, I didn't know that was a strength. I never thought of it that way. That's pretty neat, because I do look at the future. So you will probably discover things that are strengths that you have that you weren't even aware of, but that God has given you to use in his favor. Now, the scripture today says that he entrusts his strengths to those three servants, slaves, he calls them. He's entrusted them and us with a lot. It depends upon how we use them. If we develop those strengths and use them in his service, he will be very, very happy. And he will welcome us into his kingdom, into his joy, into his happiness. If we hide them away, ignore them, don't use them, if we're afraid and fear is often our greatest enemy, then he won't be so happy. Now, there's some fears that we need to have. We need right now to be afraid of the coronavirus because it is deadly and it is lurking where we don't suspect. It's just scary. But there are other fears that hold us back, that keep us from taking risks. And so we need to ask God to help us deal with our fears and to recognize the talents we have and to use them. So let's just take a few moments to think about what talents has God entrusted you? And how can you use them to spread his love in this world of ours? We believe that God has given us all strengths, talents, and he would like us to develop those and use them in his service. Let's take a moment to pray and thank God through the Apostles' Creed. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. For the church, may God inspire us with new vision of how to use our gifts to meet the greatest needs of the world around us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. That we be blessed with the courage and strength to follow in Jesus' footsteps and faithfully give ourselves in loving service to those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Grant us the wisdom and will to act in ways that will reduce the spread of the virus and that all who need medical help will receive it, we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That more will answer the call to serve our church and they will receive the support they need to discern their vocation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as a country, we might unite and work together to resolve the many problems we face as a nation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For those who are ill, may they find strength, hope, and comfort in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially all whom we remember with love, may they join the saints in the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we ask that you hear these prayers and all the prayers in our hearts. Answer us as you see best. Help us accept your answer to our prayer. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And now we take some of the gifts that God has given us, in this case bread and wine, and offer it back to him in thanksgiving. I have a home, eternal home, but for now I walk this broken world. You walked it first, you know our pain. But you sure hope can rise again up from the grave. Abide with me, abide with me. Don't let me fall and don't let go. Walk with me and never leave. Gethsemane before the cross before the nails overwhelmed alone you pray you met us in our suffering and bore our shame abide with me abide with me don't let me fall and don't let go. Walk with me and never leave. Ever close, God, abide with me. And up ahead, eternity. We'll weep no more, we'll sing with joy, abide with me. Pray, friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at our hands for the, for the praise and glory of God's name, for our, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Grant, O Lord, that what we offer to your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ. For out of compassion for our waywardness, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim... Comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Oh, 
Holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by setting down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. This is the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of love, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy and the people of God. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Anthony, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the The kingdom, kingdom, the the power, and the glory glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now let us safely exchange some sign of peace with one another.
the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly asking, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks be to God. Sometimes it feels like I'm watching from the outside. Sometimes it feels like I'm breathing. But am I alone? I won't keep searching for answers that aren't here to find. Shame. 